Okay, today we're going to talk about how you get into fly tying. Whether you're a beginner, you've never tied a fly, we will show you and tell you everything you need to know to get into this awesome sport. Right. Boom. I want to catch a fish this time. Okay, so we get asked all the time, what do I need to, to start tying flies? Um, the, the thing that we get asked the most is, do I get a kit or do you guys sell a fly tying kit? And the short answer is no, we don't, but kind of. Um, there are different types of kits that you can buy. Some of the kits have a vise, all the tools, all the materials. And you know, it's kind of easy to think as a beginner that that's going to be all you need to get into tying flies until you get more serious you graduate. about it, right? So um, in our experience, a lot of times you'll end up taking half the materials from that kit and you'll place it in the uh, circular file called the garbage. That also known as a round file. The round file, yep, the dad joke there. Um, but we're gonna kind of show you um, some of the things that we do when we're looking for new stuff for beginner tires. Okay, the first thing that you will need as a beginning tire is a vise. A vise. In the United States, we spell it V-I-S-E, -S -E, although it is a V-I-C-E. Right. When you start to get really addicted to it, it is a vise. All right, so there are lots of vices out there. In our shop, we tend to sell the stuff that we know is going to help hold a hook. Um, I know that seems very trivial, but it is definitely something. At a that bare we, minimum. At a bare minimum. So tell them about the, the griffin that you have there. So when it comes to selecting a vice, again, we tend to say stay away from kits, including vices that come in kits, because you'll end up getting a vice that has soft metal for the jaws, and it may hold a few hooks, but longer term, it's likely going to either chip or wear down. So when we talk to beginners that really wanted to get a fly tying, the kind of the low end that we would say is one of these, for instance, the Griffin Superior 1A retails for around 56 to $60. It's very simple. It's a C-clamp. So vices come in two flavors. You have the pedestal, which can sit on your table, and then a C-clamp, which you would clamp onto the table like that. And so... I wouldn't go much less expensive than this one here. Uh, this one won't be able to hold super large hooks, but at a bare minimum for economical purposes, you will get out the door and you can tie flies. Yeah, that, that vice definitely will hold hooks. That's why we have it. Um, it'll do its job. When you want to graduate to maybe uh, another type of vice called a rotary vice, this one is the Griffin Odyssey Spider. Um, this is a really good value rotary vise, which allows you to put a hook in and rotate it around to tie flies. There are some techniques where you definitely want that. I think that all the serious tires in our shop tie on a rotary vise. So as you can see, we have a wide selection of vices. Um, those are Griffin vices. This is a standard HMH vise. You can see that it rotates. But not in the same way. Right. Not, a, not a true rotary, but it, it technically does rotate. Um, other popular vices are the Peak vise, the Renzetti, the Regal, and then this is another Griffin that is rotary. And they range anywhere from about 150, 160, um, all the way to upper 200s. Yeah. I would say if you're going to start with the vice and, and maybe budget's not a super high concern, I would look to at least start by spending around 200 to $250 for a pretty good vice, one that will last you for years and years. Not to say these less expensive ones won't. They certainly will last you for a long time. But these other vices are going to have other bells and whistles like the rotary feature, um, things that you'll find as you tie will come in handy for you. Yeah, absolutely. This will get you into the hobby, and then you'll eventually want something like one of these. And then it's going to take a whole other level of fly tying nerdiness before you want something, anything more than what these vices will offer yep. you. And as a note, the probably the top-selling vice in the shop is the Renzetti Traveler. 
So that's a great one. Um, the Griffin Montana Mongoose is also a really good one. It comes with the case, a C-clamp, as well as a pedestal, which most others don't. And there is a whole mafia that stands behind the Peak Vice. It's made in Colorado. Very good vice. It's a, it's a great vice. My son has one, and he loves it. Okay, so there you go. You have a vice. That's all you need, right? You're done. You just uh, set it there on your table, and it can hold your papers down and make sure that uh, nothing blows off the table. Right. The next big thing that uh, people kind of debate about is scissors. You would think, so what do I need? I just need to go get some uh, sewing scissors from the store. Well, guess what? Those would probably work. But there are different fly tying specialty scissors that you can get anywhere from about, uh, I don't know, 11 bucks up to 100. And so um, this is a good scissor for about, I think, 11 to $12 made by Dr. Slick. This is about $25. It's got a serrated edge on one of the blades and it's got a tensioning device. And then this is a $100 pair of scissors that's basically sharpened with Japanese baby ninja tears. They're so sharp. <laughs> they are sharp. And I know a lot of people say, well, they're just scissors. But when you get into kind of the technicality of tying flies, you're cutting really small things in confined spaces. So if we'll have a link down in the description where I go nerd out all super crazy techie on scissors. For beginners, you may not need a $100 pair of scissors. This is a great scissor for a beginner. Yeah, the Eco line of Dr. Slick scissors are a good starting point. They're not going to break the bank, but we recommend you have a good pair of scissors because that's kind of when it comes to cutting and getting things nice and clean and tidy and tight. Scissors are a big deal. Don't cut your toenails with them. Don't cut metal wire. Don't do any of that crap. These are fly tying scissors. Use them as such. You need to guard them with the same sanctity your mother would guard her sewing scissors. Yes. That you would never cut paper or toenails. Right. The other thing to consider with scissors is if you can go to a fly shop and try them in your hand. Look at that. That's a big hand. So I have to have pretty big finger holes for the scissors to be comfortable. Um, if I, I've tried tying with some sewing scissors before and I can barely get my knuckles in them. Yep. So try them out. Um, if you tie with scissors in your hand, which some weird people do, um, kind of put them in your hand and feel how they feel. And don't poke your eye out. <laughs> That's my issue. <laughs> okay, so there you go. You need a vise, you need scissors. What's next? Bobbin. Bobbin. Or a bobbin holder, to be exact. A bobbin or a bobbin holder. That's another cross the pond thing. You yes. call it a bobbin holder. Typically in the States, we just call it a bobbin. Yep. Right. So you have your vise, which will hold your hook. You have your scissors to cut your thread. Now you need something to hold your thread. So the bobbin will hold your thread by virtue of these. And the, the concept is the same for all of them. So the bobbin itself will have these two little spindle arms that come down and the thread will be inserted in the in between those and that that way it can spool freely or at least with some tension as you tie your flies um, on a side note sewing thread typically is not going to work you need fly tying thread to go in these bobbins that is the best tip of this whole video all right so this bobbin happens to be the griffin ceramic or supreme ceramic bobbin this is the standard by which all other bobbins are measured because there you go brig i said it measure <laughs> Major. we have brigham in the back just laughing do you know what i'm gonna dock your pay <laughs> Jeez. you are so mean now i'm through you all right so this this bobbin is the standard by which all other bobbins are measured the reason for that is because it was one of the first ones with the ceramic tip. All that's going to do is it's going to provide uh, a really slick surface for your thread to uh, kind of rotate around. It's not going to, tr or it's going to provide a surface, a smooth surface for your thread to come out and it won't nick your thread and break it. The majority of the time when we talk to people about needing stronger thread for tying flies, it's because their bobbin is bad. So most of the good bobbins these days have a ceramic tip. Um, let's see. 
this is a right bobbin it has a ceramic tube um, and it has a different tensioning device which we'll talk about in a second this one is a cnf bobbin it's a higher end bobbin that has just a good weight and feel to it but overall the general design is very very simple and then you have bobbins like this this <laughs> that have a very finely polished metal tip so talk to us about tensioning systems Frito. So for the most part, most bobbins tensioning system is by virtue of the inherent ability of the two pieces of metal to squeeze the end of the spool together so that you don't have it spinning too freely or too tightly so that you can't pull more thread out. Some of them like the right bobbin have a kind of a screw on tensioning system and you can adjust the, the thread tension Again, it's the tension that's exerted on the spool. It has a little clutch kind of thing there that you can dial it in. Um, but by and large, those are the two main types. It's either going to have some direct contact or some sort of clutch that you can dial in. Absolutely. So threading your bobbin can be kind of a frustrating task. Not all bobbins come with a threader, so it's highly recommended to get a bobbin threader with your bobbin. The Griffin does come with one. Or you can do it the savage way and put a little bit of thread through the bottom of it and suck it through the tube with your mouth. Yep. That's gross, though. All right, so we have the bobbin. Vice, scissors, bobbin. I think the next thing is the whip finisher. Yep. The whip finisher is this wacky contraption right here. Um, when you see that on your desk, it kind of looks like a little miniature meat hook of some sort. But essentially what you're doing is you're taking materials and you're just lashing them onto a piece of metal, the hook. And at the end of that, if you didn't tie a knot at the end of your fly, that thread would just unwind and everything would fall off your fly. Bad news, especially when you're crushing them on the river, right? Yep. My recommendation is to get a whip finisher and stick a hook in your vise and learn how to whip finish very first because nothing's worse than tying your first fly ever and then totally screwing up the whip finish. Or you get to the end and you're like, wait, how do I stop? Yeah. It's like you yeah. can't just cut the thread, it all come undone. Right. Description below should have a link to our whip finishing video, just FYI, even it though, shows you how to whip finish. Yeah, even though Curtis did it, it probably it's will old, teach you. Right. But it's, you'll still learn old. the concept. So this is a cool one for fat fingered people like me. It's an ergo handle. I can get a hold of it and it's got a little blade on the back of it. You can just pop your thread or you can just get a standard whip finisher like this. You really don't need anything fancy, but just like anything fly tying, you can spend a hundred bucks on one of these yeah. if you want. They run the gamut. So, but again, these are the tools that we recommend you really need to have to get started. And so we've got, again, vise, scissors, bobbin, whip finisher. Is there anything else that you have to have to have to start tying flies? In my opinion, those are the core tools. You can pretty much get around all the other stuff. The other ones will make your life easier as you tie flies, but you surely can get started with just that. Now, the, the specialty tools, I guess we'll call them, are the ones that will make your life easier um, so now we're, we want to talk about, uh, now that we've talked about the core tools, some of the other tools that are more specialty tools that will make your life easier. Okay. Let's talk about this one for five seconds. Bodkin. It's a needle. You use it to put glue on your fly. Or the pick end. stuff out. Yeah. They're all different flavors. Very similar. It's basically a needle on the end of a thing. You will be able to borrow one of those from your mom's sewing stash and she will not care. Just get a push pin, right? <laughs> okay, this one's kind of interesting. And since I I was a hackle plier shunner for a long time, I'm not even going to talk about them. I'm going to talk about you. Because you were an anti hackleite I was an, plier. <laughs> I was an anti hackle plierite. So they're um, so basically they're little tiny pliers of little pinchers that you can use to grab hold of smaller things like feathers. You can use it to grab hold of wire. And what they do is they allow you to grab hold of that little thing and then wrap it around the, f the hook or whatever you're using uh, with making your fly so that you don't have to keep it held in your fingers. 
So like wire sometimes can slip out of your fingers or uh, sometimes your fingers are clumsy like me and you might break them. Yep. So the hackle pliers are a good little tool to make sure whatever it is you're wrapping around your hook will stay in contact with the material and keep it tight. All right. So even though they're called hackle pliers, you can use them for anything that is not hackle. You don't need to call the shop and ask for permission to use it on something else. Correct. Right. Um, okay. The next thing, let's talk about this contraption right here. Uh -huh. This is not a, like a little miniature shot glass that you can drink Diet Mountain Dew out of so you can ration yourself. It's called a hair stacker or a hair evener. So the idea is if you're tying like an elk hair caddis or a deer hair fly of any type of fly that you need to put deer hair on, you can put it into this, into this uh, hair stacker and tap it on the table and it will align the tips. You pull this out, the tips will be sticking out right here. I can take those tips out and tie a fly. And we so. will, there is a tutorial to an elk hair caddis. So yeah. we recommend an elk hair caddis is a good beginner fly. Um, and also we'll have a link in the description or links to a lot of the beginner flies. So once you've got all these tools, the next step is what flies do I tie? So we're going to have a link to all those kind of more beginner oriented flies along with their material lists. So you should be good to go, go to start tying flies. And I think it's the X caddis. The X caddis. Yep. Yes. All right. So this one goes right along with it. This is a little comb for your mustache or I love to it. brush the under fur out of flies and a piece of Velcro. Why do they need Velcro? This is probably, <clears throat> besides probably my scissors, the thing that I use the most on the table. So the Velcro is good if you're tying like a leech or some other pattern where it has dubbing. Uh, we also have a video on how to apply dubbing down below, but you can, the Velcro sticks to that. It's uh, usually a synthetic or some sort of natural buggy material, uh, the dubbing fibers, and this will just kind of tease them out. You can also use it to help brush out hackle if it gets trapped down. Um, and then again, the comb end can be used to brush out hair on fur or even dubbing. You can use it to brush out guard hairs or different things with dubbing. So very useful. This is actually one of the top selling tools that we sell. Tell them the exact name of it. Stonfo uh, Combo Brush. And it has two ends. Two ends. So it's two for the price of one. Two for the price of one. Okay. That's good. Okay. Now, another thing that you'll use uh, on, you know, streamers or, or leeches or nymphs are dubbing loops. And so this machine is designed so that when you make a dubbing loop, this connects into the loop and keeps tension on it. It's got good weight to it. And then once I put my materials into the loop, I can just spin it with my thumb. So it's a ball bearing tool. This one has a few heads on it, but a dubbing loop twisting tool is a very useful tool on your bench. They come in the ball bearing version. This is the one that I like a lot. It's, it's designed to do some streamer techniques and it also has a dubbing loop hook on it. Um, but uh, for a little while, this would go out with almost every single order we had in the shop. Yeah, and they still, fly out of the shop pretty good but yeah they're those things are awesome they come in handy yeah that's so they're they're between 15 bucks and 50 depending on which one you get all right one of the next little tools as you graduate from nymphs and more kind of simple patterns and you need to tie dry flies the hackle which is chicken feathers from either the back kind of saddle area or the neck the back of the the head and shoulders the uh, hackles are used to float dry flies. And so in order to size the hackles, they're natural uh, feathers. They come in different sizes and variations. And so this is called a hackle, uh, hackle gauge, and it will help you size the hackle to the fly that you're using. So it'll have the little, basically the representation of the hook size. And you just wrap your hackle around that, and it will tell you what size hook that hackle fits. The, the thing about this that, that will, it will prevent you from tying a fly, adding hackle to it, and then a lot of newer tires will take and cut their hackle to size. Ugh. Don't do that. Shudder. 
I think you'll get struck by lightning if you do that. So uh, this will help you to put the proper size hackle on your dry flies. Yep. So a few other things. This mysterious glob of foam has been sitting here. This is a very simple device. It's called, what is it, a tool caddy? Yeah, tool caddy, foam tool caddy. So you can go like this. You say, oh, I'm going to put this here. I'm going to put this here. And you can put your glues here. But this is a really cool tool. It's, it's a pretty inexpensive way to keep your tools organized. I think I have two of these on my desk right yeah, now. Yeah, me too. Um, but, I mean, they last forever. Made by Renzetti. Uh, they're like 25 bucks or something like that. So those. And then, all right, so we told you not to get a kit. We kind of lied. Kind of. Right. Because there are some types of kits that come in handy. Because you could, now we'll have all the links to all these tools down here. You you may want to get a couple of bobbins, maybe even a couple of pairs of scissors. So a la carte is a good way to go. But if you want to buy everything all together, there's several options that you have. So we I have two of them. There's a, there's a travel tool set from Stonfo that has pretty much everything we talked about in one little one little kit, which is really good. And then Loon, this is one of their kits that they have. And this one has everything you need to get started tying flies as well. So you notice that we didn't recommend a, a kit that has materials in it. We did recommend a kit that has tools in it. So there are some good kits out there that just have tools. Um, so if you wanted to make it really easy on yourself, you just grab a vise, you'd grab one of these, and then you would start buying materials to tie flies. Right. Speaking of material kits, one of the reasons we don't recommend getting material kits is because, like Cheech said, they end up having a bunch of stuff that you probably won't use. The way we've done it with all our videos, and again, we'll have some of the tutorial links down below, any of the videos that we have, they'll already have all of the links to the materials. You simply click a button and it can add all of them to your cart. So in essence, it's a kit, but it's per fly. So you don't have to go out and buy a bunch of materials to, fly, to tie who knows what patterns. We'll get you on the path to tie, say, a zebra midge or a caddis or a hare's ear. Just very simple things with only the materials that you need in the hooks to tie them. So the tools and the vise kind of come before that. And then you can just decide based on what fly you're tying, throw the materials in there and go. And here's a bonus. If I had to recommend one fly to start tying, it is the zebra midge. Very good. It's very simple. It teaches you how to apply materials to a hook. It, it, it teaches you how to wrap materials, and you will have to do a whip finish on it. You can also apply dubbing on it. And so, it will catch crazy fish. Right, and you can, you can change the colors up. So, uh, you know, for 20 or 30 bucks, you have enough material to tie a ton of zebra midges. And if you do two or three dozen worth of, of zebra midges, that will kind of tell you whether or not you really like yep. this and you want to go forward with it. All right, so check out the links below, store.flyfishfood.com. We have it all.